Casper's number one for New Country, My Country 95.5. I am Doc. And I'm Prairie Wife. And we have a special guest on the phone. I so appreciate this man's time. Mike Poland, the scientist in charge from the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. How are you, sir? I'm good. How are you? Uh, doing awesome. Uh, well, thank you so much again for allowing us some of your time. I, I cannot even imagine uh, somebody like yourself, sir. You probably have everybody tapping on your shoulder wanting a few minutes. So <laughs> we appreciate you uh, to visiting with us a little bit today. Um, so for, yeah, for somebody no that's maybe not familiar with what a scientist in charge does, what is your role and how long have you been involved with Yellowstone? Well, my role is one really of coordination. Uh, so Yellowstone Volcano Observatory is kind of interesting. It's not just the USGS. It's actually a consortium of nine institutions. It's universities and uh, uh, research nonprofits and even state geological surveys, like the Wyoming Geological Survey. And, uh, and so my role is coordinating, making sure that uh, research is getting done, making sure that the monitoring is, is up to date and up to speed, and that everyone's sort of working together towards a better understanding of Yellowstone. And I've been in this position since 2017, and then I've been doing uh, work in Yellowstone since uh, 2002. Oh, wow. Nice. We would say that you're the OG, the original gangster, <laughs> then, huh? <laughs> well, there have been people working at Yellowstone a lot longer than I have. It's the, one of the neat things is you know you get to stand on the shoulders of giants, and uh, and so there's there's a pretty nice foundation that I get to work from. Yeah. Um, so as as a scientist and, and working specifically with Yellowstone, and I would imagine a lot of the volcanoes and the Cascades, um, is it frustrating to deal with the sensationalistic conspiracy theories about the super volcano? Um, a little bit. Uh, I, I, <laughs> sort of a loaded question for me sometimes. But <laughs> no I, I pun intended. It's explosive. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, oh, yeah. I got oh, to do it. Wah, wah. Um, <laughs> so I, I actually see a lot of these as opportunities. Um, I think most people, when they're looking for this kind of information, they, they really just have questions. They have honest questions, and they, they don't mm -hmm. know the answers. So there is a lot of sensationalist stuff out there, like you see on the, the tabloids and random YouTube channels. And those folks are trying to take advantage of people that really just are curious. Um, so I, I see that in some ways as an opportunity to engage, you know, to try to, to get people good information. So I'm always happy when people, you know, write and ask me questions. Yeah, we, we, we try to steer away from the sensational stuff. Obviously, we, you know, we are only a couple hours away from Yellowstone. So, um, you know, we I mean, kinda... we do have some concerns sometimes. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like, you know, I, I definitely, if I see Woody Harrelson heading towards the park, I probably should be concerned. Right. But, but, but we shared a report, I think Newsweek did this not too long ago, mm -hmm. about uh, the USGS study about magma being responsible for some of the uplift near Norris. So what is your take mm -hmm. on, on that, like, uplift over the, over the past several? years and what's happening with the Yellowstone supervolcano right now? The really cool thing about I mean, my specialty in terms of the, the science of volcanology is how the ground moves. And at Yellowstone, we have tremendous amounts of that. The ground is always moving up and down, and it, it varies over time and space. And the Norris area is one of the most sort of changeable, dynamic, interesting areas in that respect. It goes up and down all the time. Uh, Norris had been going up over the last few years, and then in, in 20. 18, 20, 19, it sort of, you know, plateaued, and then it went down a little bit at the beginning of, uh, end of 2019, beginning of 2020. So it's, it's just always changing, and this is by very small amounts, by a couple of inches a year, usually, that's kind of the rate. In uh, the early 2000s, late 90s, there was an episode of uplift that we could see was quite deep. It was centered, you know, many, many miles beneath the Norris area. And we believe that this was a small intrusion of magma. And then Norris basically did nothing for nearly a decade or so. And in 2013, there was a very rapid uplift of Norris. And then in 2014, a rapid subsidence. So the ground went down. And then in 2015, it started going up again until we got into, you know, 2019 when it plateaued and then went down a bit. And we think what we're looking at here is a whole cycle of magmatic intrusion back in the late 1990s, very deep. But that triggered... Uh, of a release of gases and waters, which magma often carries with it. And the deformation we saw more recently was an expression of that gas and water that was percolating beneath Norris. And of course, we know there's a ton of water beneath Norris, given that it's a geyser basin. Mm -hmm. So the really interesting story there is that we saw this whole cycle for the first time because of the, the great monitoring data we now have access to. So it's sort of a story of being able to really read what Yellowstone does. It's not alarming because this kind of thing just happens all the time. It's it's merely that we had a chance to actually see it and characterize it for the first time. Yeah, do you think that, that activity, uh, Mike, Mike Poland, by the way, the scientist in charge of Yellowstone with us on the radio here, do you think that that had anything to do with the reawakening of Steamboat Geyser? I think opinions vary on that. My own sense is probably not because... 
there are many, many geysers in the Norris area. So why just Steamboat? You know, mm-hmm. what, what makes Steamboat more special than, say, Echinus Geyser, which is literally right next door to Steamboat and turned off? in the 1990s. I think it was late 90s. You know, there's, a, there's a real big viewing platform that's been built around Echinus, and yet the thing hardly ever erupts. Well, it used to, and they built the viewing platform so that they could see all these Echinus eruptions, and then it sort of turned off. It rarely erupted. There's no real, you know, seating area around Steamboat. There's, you know, one bench, and yet now it's erupting all the time. So this is really the way geysers work. So I'm, I'm skeptical that there's a connection between this activity at Norris, which I bet you happens all the time. It's just we just saw it for the first time. Yeah, good to know. So, okay, Mike, a completely hypothetical scenario. Okay, wait, as, let me get out my pen a, and paper. This is what a, I need to know. As, as a scientist, so <laughs> what, realistically, not from a conspiracy theory angle, obviously, but scientifically, what would you need to see happen at Yellowstone that would give you genuine concern that we were about to see a major event? Well, so first, it's important to understand that Yellowstone is this really active and dynamic place. Now, there were some news reports that made it onto you know, various social media feeds recently that, oh, there are some earthquakes at Yellowstone. There's always earthquakes. There's, there's yeah. something like an average of 2,000 earthquakes every year yeah. at Yellowstone, and several of those are felt. So in order to get concerned, I would expect that we would be seeing like tens of thousands of earthquakes, many of which would be felt. Okay, writing that so down. So you'd see a huge swarm. You would see a tremendous amount of uplift, right? Not this, you know, oh, geez, the ground is going up. Yeah, it's always going up or down by a few centimeters a year. But if we start seeing meters a year, you know, many feet mm-hmm. of uplift in a very short time period and, you know, say weeks to months, that would be concerning. And if we started seeing changes in heat emissions, water emissions, gas emissions, geyser activity that was happening on a park-wide scale, one geyser is not an indicator. Even two geysers are not an indicator. But if all of the geysers in the park started changing, if we started seeing changes in the gas emissions, if suddenly many areas started to heat up instead of an area here or there, that would be concerning. So that's what about, the sort of thing that's been witnessed prior to other big eruptions at uh, these kind of caldera systems like Yellowstone. What about harmonic tremors? I've heard that phrase used a lot. Yeah, that's sort of a misused term. Um, I think some people sort of see any time there's like vibration on a seismometer where there's no clear earthquake, and they say, oh, that's harmonic tremor. Well, harmonic implies a very specific frequency content. And we've actually never seen that at Yellowstone. So some people are misusing that term. But tremor itself is sort of a garbage can term. It kind of means any time the seismometer is shaking uh, pretty much continuously. And so that, that could just be my family walking across the boardwalk. Because there's like 800 <laughs> of us. That's tremor. Yeah, that's it, tremor. it is so shocking you know? that people would misuse terms about Yellowstone. What? I'm so no. amazed. <laughs> So, yeah, so, I'm, I'm super surprised. <laughs> so what the other thing I hear, Mike, people concerned about a major earthquake, like, you know, Idaho had like a, a big chalice quake uh, not that long ago. Mm-hmm. Um, so could a big earthquake possibly set the super volcano off? It's pretty unlikely. Earthquakes, th- th- it seems like it should make sense, right? I mean, it's it sort of, you have this idea that, oh, well, the earth shakes up the magma chamber and then that's sort of like shaking a can of soda and kablooey, mm-hmm. right? It doesn't really work that way. If we look globally, there just aren't that many instances of big earthquakes that have triggered eruptions. Now we look at Yellowstone and say, okay, well, how about Yellowstone specifically? Well, Yellowstone, the last time it erupted was a lava flow, and that's the most common form of activity, by the way. Yellowstone is not just about explosions. It erupts lava flows far more often. The last lava flow, was the last time magma made it to the surface, was 70,000 years ago. Oh. Think of how many magnitude 6, 7 earthquakes have happened since that time. And in fact, you know, people, I will occasionally say, well, what about, you know, Cascadia, right? The magnitude 9 that's going to happen at some point off the coast of Oregon and Washington. Well, the last time that happened was in the year 1700. Yellowstone clearly didn't erupt. And it seems to happen about every thousand years or so, you know, give or take. Well, Yellowstone hasn't erupted in 70,000 years. So there will have been, you know, many, many magnitude 9 earthquakes that did not trigger Yellowstone. So, you know, this it's a, it's a good question. It's a common question. We see it a lot. We see it based after every magnitude six or seven earthquake in the western U.S. It hasn't happened for the hundreds of times there have been such earthquakes in the past. It's not something we expect in the future. Okay, well, I'm going to unpack the suitcase <laughs> and the trailer full of just-in-case stuff I'm going to keep my asbestos t-shirt closed, though. <laughs> Um, y- Yellowstone, they, they make, it, it can be made a big deal out of it, but you don't have to make Yellowstone any more spectacular than it already is. And I think you guys Amen, probably know yeah. better than just about anyone. It's an amazing place. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We love it. Mike Poland, scientist in charge, Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. Mike, we cannot thank you enough for your time. Yes, thank um, you, sir. Hi, we'll, we'll make sure we link up everybody uh, with 
your your monthly updates on YouTube. Very informative stuff, uh, and especially with a lot of kids that have been locked down out of school and everything. A great way to keep up oh, to date yeah. with what's happening at Yellowstone. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, thanks very much. I, I appreciate the chance to, to chat. I, I love talking Yellowstone, so give me a call anytime.